I've uh, prepared the stocks. I wanted to show you uh, the stocks as I'm finished. I put some uh, painter's tape along the sides, both sides, just to uh, keep the epoxy that oozes out over the top and may run down, just to keep that out of the, the checkering on the outside of the stock. Um, the only other thing that I did uh, is I added a, another dam to keep the epoxy from running down into the, uh, the action screw. So I've got both rifles ready to bed. Uh, the next step is to determine how much um, epoxy I need to mix up for these two rifles. So what I have is a uh, small measuring cup and I'm uh, going to use it to determine how many one ounce uh, containers I need for each um, action. And what I'm going to use is uh, the dark uh, Marine Tex epoxy. I think I've got this open. You can see it's a very dark color. And uh, this mixes five parts to one part of this, which is the Marine Tex epoxy catalyst. So, if I look down in the stock at the areas that I'm going to bed um, and just compare that to the volume here, uh, in this area and this area, that may be a half of an ounce. Uh, this area here may be another half of an ounce. So just to make sure that I'm not going to run out, <laughs> Um, and then I've got the barrel channel to add in, but the uh, recoil lug will take up a lot of that clearance. I'm going to mix up two ounces of epoxy for this rifle. And then if I look at this rifle over here, I've got a little bit more uh, epoxy that I need. There's more area that, that is, uh, uh, needs to be bedded, um, but still I believe maybe no more than say three ounces um, again planning on that um, uh, you know, to, to not run out so in all total what I'm going to do is scoop out five ounces of the uh, of the epoxy into a measuring cup and then transfer that to a mixing cup and then it mixes five parts to one with hardener, so I'll scoop out an ounce of hardener and then stir that up. The can says that you have 30 to 40 minutes working time, so I'll show you once I start mixing the epoxy. Okay, put the lead back on the resin and the hardener. So this is uh, four ounces of the resin and about three quarters of an ounce, maybe a little bit less than three quarters of the hardener. And I'm going to mix this up real good. This is very thick, very high viscosity. So I'm going to start out mixing with a screwdriver, and by the way, uh, alcohol will clean epoxy off as long as you don't get too much on it. <laughs> so start the mix. Um, have to make sure to get the resin all throughout the, uh, the epoxy. And uh, it takes a few minutes to mix it up. As I'm mixing it, maybe you can see the viscosity is lessening. So that means it's starting to, uh, the hardener is starting to sheet out. Eventually the cup will start getting warm. But again, the pot life or the, the time that I have to work with this is, uh, I think I read 45 minutes. So it's a fairly slow set epoxy. So I don't think you want to watch me mix this for five minutes. So what I'm going to do is bring you back when I am pouring 
the first uh, first stop. Okay, so I'm going to pour this is the Remington 700 stock. I've mixed this for, I don't know, maybe five minutes, uh, being sure to scrape the edges of the pot and uh, you know get it all mixed up. What I'm going to do is get a small amount, go into the rifle, especially the, uh, the bedding area for the recoil lug. And what you have to do is get that spread out and then there will be trapped air bubbles. So you want to let that set and then stick your um, popsicle stick back in there and try to get out all the air bubbles in the recoil lug area. That's the most important area that we're going to bid. The next area we're going to do is forward of the recoil lug. And that's just going to be completely filled. And here again, it's going to have air bubbles in it. So um, you have to use your popsicle stick, move it around, make sure you get as many of the air bubbles as you can out of it. And remember with this area, I made an artificial dam to go a little bit higher than I need to. And so I'm going to put that material in now. So that I am way high and the excess will ooze out past the barrel and I'll scrape it off from the outside. The next area I have to bed is down around the action screw. So I'm going to put some down in there. And by the way I used a different popsicle stick for this than I did for mixing. Um, just to make sure I had a clean stick with no resin on it. So I'm going to fill that area up and then get a bit more and go on the other side. What I'm doing is forcing it down into the area and then I'm just, you know, just polishing it to try to get all the air bubbles out of the epoxy. And I can see my recoil lug area has settled a bit. I'm going to go back in there and try to get out more air bubbles out of that. I'm getting to where this stock is mostly filled. So I'm going to put a little bit more on that. Then I'm going to go to the other stock and let this epoxy settle some of the air bubbles out. So let me move the camera and you can watch me on that one. This rifle is very similar as far as the areas that I'm bedding. The first area that I'm going to bed, put the epoxy in for bedding, is the recoil lug area, the most important area. And again, I'm getting the air bubbles out. And the next area is in front of the recoil lug. This will actually support maybe the first inch of the barrel. Now I'm going to do the action screw area and let that area that I just did, let it settle a little bit to get the air out of it. And remember I built a dam on this one as well to prevent uh, material from going back in the action. Okay, now 
think I've probably got enough to be sure that I've got this overfilled. I'm actually going to remove a little bit from the recoil bug area because it will uh, squeeze out. I want to get it started. This area I can probably add a little bit more to to make sure it contacts the barrel properly. And then I'm, I'm moving it up on the stock. What's going to happen when I set the stock in is the material is actually going to ooze out and as I collapse the stock down into it a lot of material is and I want that I want it to push into all the small areas and basically ooze out of the stock all right that's looking pretty good A little, little bit more right there. Now I'm going to go back to the first stock because it will have had time now to settle a bit. And look for any areas that are low. If I look at this, this is substantially above the artificial dam that I put in. So I know that's enough material. I've got material down in the recoil lug area and the recoil lug itself will um, move material around however it needs to be moved. Um, I could probably use a little bit more material right here. Okay, that's looking good. its way out. I'd rather have too much than too little in this area. Too little will leave a, a void. Too much just means it's going to make a mess and I can clean up a mess. Okay. Since I've got the camera this way, this will be the first action I put in. So I put this straw in just to keep material out of the screw hole when I go to put the action back together. So I've got a forward screw to put in, that'll be the primary screw, and then a rear screw to put in, action screw. I've already put release agent on everything. Put it on the screws, the threads, um, I'll show you the, um, the bottom of the rifle in a minute. So the way, the way this goes in is this area um, will go where the, the main action screw is. It'll go right in there and then the rear one will go in. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, I'm not even going to tighten these finger tight. I'm just going to tighten them down a little bit at a time and draw the action down into the epoxy. Uh, I guess I might put on some new gloves too. You do get a little bit of that epoxy on the gloves and I don't want to get it on the rifle if I can help it.
this troll. And in goes the rifle. Another thing I did was I put a small amount of modding clay in this action hole just so that the uh, the uh, uh, epoxy will not just uh, run up into the threads. Alright, so you're going to start seeing some material coming out. The rifle still has a, quite a bit of ways to go and I want that to come out. What that does is um, as it comes out the top, I know that all of the air bubbles are out from underneath. And what I'm going to do as it comes out is I'm just going to scrape it off. No need to be uh, super critical here. Just scrape it off and get it out of your way. And this stuff does go everywhere. Push it a little bit further into the stock. And then repeat the process, scrape it off. So this epoxy takes 24 hours for full cure. <clears throat> what I will come back, what I will do, is I'll come back after about three hours and I'll pop this rifle out of the stock. The reason for that is this is a lot easier to clean up with a razor blade than it is to clean up with a Dremel tool. So. Um, what I'll do is I'll um, come back after three hours and then um, clean up a portion of the epoxy that has come out and that's hardened and just to make sure that I can I can get it off easily. Now some of the material has gone down in the action screw. I keep a pointed tool for that reason. I've got to dig that out so that I can get the screw up in there. some of the extra that is on the inside of the stock.
It looks like <clears throat> the epoxy has broken through the, the small dam that I put in there. So before I put this in, I'm going to make sure I've got wax uh, all over this. I'm going to make sure that I wax this up a little bit better than I have in case any epoxy comes in contact with that. I sure wish I could take this off, but I don't see a way. There's got to be a way of taking this off. Let me look at this a little bit. Okay, back to seat the Remington 700. So I see that my epoxy has settled a bit, but it is still, I believe, more than adequate to bed the rifle. I uh, don't see any air bubbles remaining, so this looks good to go. Now the Remington has a little bit different action screw configuration. Uh, there's only one at the front, one at the back. First thing to do, remove my dam for the action screw. Okay, and slowly press the stock in. And the reason I'm doing it slowly is I don't want the, uh, the small dams that I made, I don't want them to move. So I just press it in a bit and then start removing what oozes out. Just apply steady pressure downward, and the uh, you may even be able to see it on the video oozing out right here. fresh popsicle sticks so that uh, it doesn't drip like that just did. <laughs> okay, I think it is down far enough to where I can put my action screws in. So quite a bit of material came out this hole. I'm going to do like I did earlier and remove all that. The Remington has three action screws. I'm going to put the rear ones in first. They've got grease on them, they're hard to pick up.
the wrong screw in that. I believe I did. Okay, just barely snug. Again, we'll consecutively tighten these down later on. simple to get started. Okay. Now I know I've already got grease on this forward screw, but I'm going to put a lot more on it. I'm also going to stick some down in the hole because I don't want epoxy to set up. This is a very good release agent. Okay, that screw is started. Now, what I didn't show you off camera is I make sure that the recoil lug is seated backward before I apply much pressure at all to the stock. Okay, that's barely started. I'm going to try to start this one that didn't want to start. Actually, I'm going to scrape off some epoxy before I do that. to fill those threads through these latex gloves. I believe it started. Nope. Now we're not going to over tighten these screws, any of them. I want to make sure I, I leave the epoxy in contact with the rifle, but I am going to have to go down with the screws some 
to squeeze out the excess epoxy. So I do that maybe a quarter turn at a time. And then let that pressure ooze out the epoxy. As you can see, it's already coming up through the stock. thumbs you could help me. Alright, put a little more pressure on the front action screw to squeeze more epoxy out. It's probably within a half a turn of being tight. Now what I'm noticing also is I've got a little bit of epoxy that spilled. It was probably on my hands. Oh, this one over here needs removing. So some more epoxy has come out of this one. So alcohol will remove epoxy if any spills, uh, you know, on, on metal, it will remove it. And uh, I've got a little bit that evidently was on a glove, and I got it out here on the barrel. So I'm going to wipe that off. And after it start, uh, it finishes oozing out, I will wipe that down with epoxy as well. But I don't want to do it now because it's slowly coming up out of the, out of the action. Um, I'll wipe that area down, take the tape off, and again, I'm going to let this set for three hours. Okay, it's been about 30 minutes since I mixed up the epoxy and uh, the epoxy has stopped oozing out of the, between the, the rifle and the stock. So it's time to take off this tape and I'm going to wipe everything down with alcohol. And what that'll do is remove any epoxy that has uh, either gone under the tape or you know it's on metal so I don't want that even though there's release agent I don't want that to set up to where I have to scrape it off with a knife so we just remove the tape straight up Here's where the sharp stick comes into its own. Um, run the sharp stick through here. Try to remove some of that. And uh, make it to where there's less that you have to take off with alcohol. So it's just a little bit. But it is enough. And by the way, popsicle sticks, gloves, have three dozen before you ever start this. Because you do run through a lot of them. 
okay. So I see a little bit down here. <clears throat> and then there's a lot of epoxy right here. So I'm just going to wet that with alcohol. Rub it with my finger. Cleans right up. And obviously there's not enough goes down in the stock to hurt any of that. It's down in the stock. But we'll get all of this off. And then the same thing to the other side. running the <clears throat> sharpened popsicle stick between the gap of the uh, stock and the rifle and removing the majority of the leftover epoxy. down with alcohol. So that got the majority of it off. Again, after three hours, I'm going to pop this out of the stock, and there'll be some areas that I need to clean up with a razor blade down in the stock. But that is what it looks like when it's uh, been seated and it's ready to uh, start uh, the three hour cure. Okay, it's been uh, three hours and I took the uh, action back out of the stock. Uh, when you lift it up, you want to pry and come straight up with it uh, because the glass is still um, uh, it's, it's totally um, set. It's just not hard at this point. Um, what I'm going to do <coughs> is take a uh, a very sharp exacto knife and I'm going to do a little bit of trimming. I'm going to leave the, the dams in place. Actually I can probably remove this one. Um, all the glass went forward exactly the way I wanted it to. So I don't need this one back here now. modeling clay but the rifle has to sit for a total of 24 hours before this is uh, fully so 
that's, that's the dam that I had at the back. So no material went back into the um, area where the magazine will be. Um, I think what I'll do <clears throat> is I will trim up this small edge right here. So what I'm cutting is is really mostly epoxy. I may be getting a little bit of plastic off the stock. And this is all epoxy. And get that out. I'm going to leave this modeling clay in there because again this hasn't fully set. I think I've cleaned up all I need to. I can set this rifle back in the stock. Before I do that, I'm going to put a little bit more mold release. By the way, I didn't show this earlier. This is dry zinc uh, sterate. So that, that actually ended up being a, a very good mold release. I'm going to put a little bit more on the recoil lug. And also on a Remington 700, there is a uh, threaded hole where uh, glass will come up through when, uh, when the uh, action was being screwed in. So all I did, and, and that pushes epoxy up into the barrel, I went in through the muzzle with a, uh, a quarter inch uh, a 36 inch long um, uh, rod and I poked that piece of epoxy and broke it off and put it uh, through my trash bin. So I'm going to try to go straight back down. Alright. And then turn the rifle over. It was tough to go in. Well, I doubt you guys want to watch me fiddle with the screws, but basically I'm just going to get this back just snug, um, not overly tight, and then the rifles have to set for uh, uh, till tomorrow night, 24 hours.
thought I'd wrap up this video and give you a good close-up of how this turned out. So this is the Browning A-bolt. And it's been more than 24 hours. I popped this out of the stock after three hours. Did a little bit of cleanup. Now I'm in the process of cleaning up totally. <clears throat> I, uh, I put some modeling clay here. I'm not really sure that that's required. I was trying to avoid something that was on the action. But now that I look at it, I'm not really sure why I even did that. <laughs> uh, there is a a line here to where the dam that I built up actually went forward a bit rather than going backward and it caused a little bit of glass or epoxy not to fill in here but I mean that's that's okay what I'm doing now is I'm in the process of digging out the remainder of this green clay and cleaning up this area filled in very well the uh, Remington 700 action turned out very well as well um, the uh, recoil lug has a good fit. I had to dig out the f leading edge of this recoil lug. I put in tape, so I had to dig that out with a knife. But I think that turned out very good. Um, one thing that I did notice <clears throat> is using this product. Now what I've used in the past is Hornady one shot and then four coats of that, let it dry between coats and then use this Hornady wax and the stocks I've been able to remove them but there's a, a definite um, decrease in force required when you use this dry zinc serrate so I thought I'd give you a close-up of that that really works uh, great as a release agent so uh, again if you, if you haven't seen the earlier video where I prepped the stock and uh, I uh, got it ready for this. This is the final product and uh, turned out real, real, real good. I can't wait to shoot them next weekend. So the next step will be to put the uh, action back in the stock after I finish my cleanup later tonight. One thing I will pass along is I uh, invested in one of these, uh, uh, it's called FAT wrench from uh, Wheeler Engineering. I uh, got replaceable drivers bits. Um, I think this is well worth the money. Um, I, I, one of my rifles made by uh, Bergara requires a 55 inch pound setting and I see the last time that I used this I torqued something at 30 inch pounds. I'm sure these stocks I'll be able to find the torque spec online and uh, you know use a good fitting bit to fit the, the screwdriver slots um, and then uh, uh, put the rifle in pushing back on the recoil lug tighten them to maybe half of the spec and then uh, then go for a final spec um, final torque spec that is